Okay, the first thing we're going to do now is look at alkenes. The alkanes are the carbon compounds that are all carbon hydrogen and all single bonds. So uh, in the stick models, all you see are straight lines. In the uh, condensed formulas, you see carbons and hydrogens and no double bonds or no triple bonds. And of course, there are no... The alkanes are found in petroleum and uh, some of them are straight chain, some of them are branched. All of them are oily. Those that are less than five carbon are gaseous. Uh, above that, they are liquids, even when they get to be really long chains, like 20 carbons. Um, they are not water soluble. Because they're oily, they do not dissolve in water. They, all, they are all carbon hydrogen, so there's no way for them to hydrogen, hydrogen bond or be attracted to the water dipole. Now we're going to name the alkanes first. The first thing we're going to name are those that have no branches. They're very easy to name. You just count the carbons, you write the prefix for that number of carbons, and then you add the ane ending. Let's look at uh, the endings for the number of carbons are meth for 1, eth for 2, probe for 3, but for 4, pent for 5, 6 for hex, 7 for hept, 8 for oct, 9 for known, 10 for deck, 11 for undeck, etc. And we're pretty much going to stay with 10 and below. Now, you can see that what we do to name an alkane is just number the carbons. So let's pick four. That's butte. And then we add the ane ending. That's how it is for all of these. These are all straight chain endings. I mean, straight chain alkanes. And so they all have just the number of carbons, then the ane ending. One thing to note is that the formula for any alkane is going to be CnH2n plus 2. If you look at the, the formula here, you can see that the number of hydrogens is always 2 times the number of carbons plus 2. So for straight chain and branch chain alkanes, we'll find this. Not all alkanes are straight chain simple, just a, uh, carbons in a row. Sometimes they have branches on them, and we call these br branches substituents. The substituent always has an ending ill, so this ill means it's something attached. So if I look at methane down here, let me show you down here. If I look at methane down here, you see it's one carbon, so we use the prefix meth for the one carbon, an ane ending for to say this is an alkane. But if we attach it to something, so this is where it would be attached to something, we call this now meth for one carbon, but ill because it's attached. Um, there's some common names for compounds where you see the methyl. For instance, methyl alcohol and methylamine. These, it's just, you can see here's the methyl group. And that's why it got that common name. Here's the methyl group. Each of these methyl groups are attached to either an alcohol functional group or an amine functional group. And so these common names grew uh, early. R is any carbon chain. Whenever we want to indicate a carbon chain and we're not really concerned about what's in that chain, we just want to say it's a carbon chain, then we write R to represent that carbon chain. So a, a fast way of indicating an alcohol is ROH. It just means it's some kind of carbon chain with an alcohol group on it. The aldehydes are written as RCHO, either with a double bond in there or not. Both indicate uh, aldehydes. And so again, this is just any carbon chain to which this aldehyde group is attached. Alkenes could be written like this. A carbon chain over here, and a carbon chain over there, and there's a double bond of the alkene. Here's an amine, uh, an amine formula, any carbon chain with an amino group. 
So let's look at how we would name these alkyl groups. Notice it's like alkane but il, so it's attached. So these are uh, carbon chains that are attached to something. One carbon, meth, attached, so methyl. Two carbons, and it's attached. So F for two carbons, il for attached. Three carbons, prop, il for attached. Four carbons, but, il for attached. Five carbons, pent, il for attached. Now they're showing you here the common name for that amyl for the pentyl group. Uh, that's really not used very much. But you can see here, these are some abbreviations we often will use to uh, indicate those chains. Uh, the PR and BU are not used very much, but ME and ET are used a great deal for indicating methyl and ethyl because those substituents are extremely common. Okay, now we're going to identify primary, secondary, and quaternary carbons. This is basically classifying the carbon by how many carbons are attached to it. If we have a carbon at the end of a chain, there's only one carbon attached, so we call it a primary carbon. If we have a carbon in the middle of the chain, then there's two carbons attached, and we call it a secondary carbon. If you have a carbon in, uh, with three carbons attached, we call it a tertiary carbon. Then a carbon that has four carbons attached, well, that's called quaternary. And so we'll use these terms again uh, later on. It, it's good for you to uh, learn these terms right now. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. These are the symbols used for primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Okay, so if we look at this uh, compound here, we can see some examples. This carbon has three carbons attached, so this carbon right here is a tertiary carbon. This carbon right here has one carbon attached, so it's a primary carbon. This carbon has two carbons attached, so it's secondary. Now, if you look at this, they're identifying the hydrogens as primary, secondary, or tertiary, and that holds true. Any hydrogen that is on a uh, tertiary carbon is a tertiary hydrogen. Any hydrogen on a, uh, on a primary carbon is a primary hydrogen. Okay, what I want you to do is pause the recording and look at the structure here and identify all of the primary carbons. Then resume after you've figured it out. Okay, all of the carbons that have three hydrogens attached are primary carbons. And of course the hydrogens are called primary hydrogens. There are four primary carbons and they're all at the end of the chain. They all have three hydrogens attached. Identify all the secondary carbons. If I look for the secondary carbons, I find that the secondary carbons have two carbons attached, one, two here, and two hydrogens attached. This carbon has two carbons attached and two hydrogens attached. And of course, those hydrogens are called secondary hydrogens. If you identify the tertiary carbons, uh, you will find that they are the carbons that have only one hydrogen attached because each of those will have three carbons attached. One hydrogen attached, three carbons attached. Okay, what we're going to uh, do now is learn how to name alkanes that have branches on them. The system that we're going to learn in uh, naming branched alkanes is the basic for general nomenclature in uh, alkane, uh, excuse me, in organic chemistry. So if you learn this well, the rest of nomenclature will come pretty easily. So make an effort to learn this pretty well. Uh, the first thing that you always do when looking at an alkane that has branches is find the longest chain. Uh, 
It doesn't matter if the longest chain is crooked, kinked, wraps back on itself. You just always look from the beginning to the end and try to find the, the chain that gives you the longest, uh, the most number of carbons. Notice a chain must start with a methyl group and end with a methyl group. It's not really a methyl group like an attachment, but it starts with a primary carbon and ends with a primary carbon. So this was a possible chain, but it was shorter than this chain. So you pick that chain as the basis of your nomenclature. So you see that there are six carbons, so you're going to name it as a hexane. If I go down and look at this one, I could have tried to look at this chain right here, but that's only five. I could look at this chain. That's only six. If I look at this chain, that's only six. If I look at this chain, that is seven. So you choose that chain as being the basis for naming. The next thing you do is you identify what substituents are attached. Any carbon that was part of the chain, you never count again. Okay, so if I go down here and look at this, I will see hexane is my base chain, so I am not going to ever count this carbon again. I'm only going to count this carbon as a substituent, and I see that what's attached is just one. So I'm going to name this as a methyl group attached to hexane. Here I have one carbon, and here I have two carbon. So this would be a methyl chain attached and this would be an ethyl chain attached. I'm very careful never to include those carbons that are in the chain again. Uh, now I say identify the substituents. Each one is prefix ill. That means prefix for the number of carbons with ill added on. So if you had five carbons, you would call it pentyl. If you have eight carbons, you would call it octal. The next thing that you do is you number your carbons to locate the substituents. And when you choose your numbers, you can count from either end of the chain. For instance, here, I could count from this end and go one, two, three, four, or I can count from this end, one, two, three. Which do I choose? I choose the system that will give me the lowest set of numbers for the substituents. So for this one, I would name this as 1, 2, 3 methyl hexane. For this one, I can go from this end and choose 1, 2, 3, 4, or I can go from this end and choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4 is lower than 4, 5, so I choose to name this as 1, 2, 3 methyl 4 ethyl heptane, but I take those and I put them in alphabetical order. So it really would be 4 ethyl 3 methyl heptane. Okay, <clears throat> how do you choose a numbering system? Uh, first, always make sure you have the longest chain. The, that's really the key to naming compounds is finding the longest chain first. And so when you go and you look at these molecules, uh, let's go over here to this one. You have to go from every end to every end and count them out. So five, and then this would be five, and this would be, uh, that would be bleh, eight, and this would be, nine and this would be nine so the longest chain you would pick would be nine but you've got to try all the possibilities to make sure you've got it, it, it you have to be diligent until you've gotten where you can recognize the longest chain at a glance the next thing after identifying that longest chain is to figure out which way you're going to number it there's two ends you can number from either end if you number from this end, you get substituents on 3, 6, and 7. If we go over and look at numbering it from this end, we get 3, 4, and 7. 
we would choose this one because 3, 4, and 7 is lower than 3, 6, and 7. So we make this our numbering system. Every molecule has only one numbering system. You don't flip from one to another numbering system. So there's one set numbering system. So we would then, after identifying what carbons have substituents, you go ahead and you list what the substituents are. We have an ethyl here, a methyl here, and a methyl here. So we would put in front of nine carbons, no name, we would put three ethyl. And then we would have a four and a seven. And then two methyls after that. And the way that we say two methyl is dimethyl. So the name of this compound would be 3-ethyl-4-7-dimethyl-nonane. Let's go down and look at this one. Again, check all the different ways to find the longest chain. And you can see that's 6. This is 4. This is 5. This is 5. This is 7, so we choose that as our longest chain. When we number from this end, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we number from this end, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, so we pick the 3, 4 numbering system. We identify the substituents on the numbering system. Make sure when you look at your substituents that you never car count any of the carbons that are in the chain. That would be counting carbons twice. You don't want to do that. So if we look at this, there's seven carbons. And here there are two carbons. Don't count this one in your chain. It's only two. And th there's one here on the three carbon. So how are we going to name this? This is going to be four ethyl, three methyl. Why do we put the four ethyl in front? Because we list the substituents in alphabetical order. So 4-ethyl-3-methyl. And then we end with heptane. So go ahead and look at this molecule here and try to name it. Pause the lecture and then restart. Okay, well this would have the name of 3-4-dimethylhexane. How do we find it? Let's find the longest chain. Here is the longest chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can number it 1, 2, 3, 4, or we can number it 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't matter. You get the same name from either end. There are two methyl groups. This is a substituent, and this is a substituent. So there are two methyl groups, so we say 3, 4, dimethylhexane. Go ahead and draw 2,3-dimethylpentane. Here is 2,3-dimethylpentane. Here is the pentane, and then on the number 2 and the number 3 carbon, you have methyl groups. Now, you could flip this over. You could have drawn it so that there were two carbons on this side and one carbon on this side. That's fine. Uh, we don't draw molecules left to right or right to left. They are written in any confirmation that we can think of. Go ahead and name this compound. Okay, to name this compound, the first thing we have to do is find the longest chain. The longest chain is through here, hexane. And on the 1, 2, 3, and 4, or 1, 2, 3, and 4, on the 3 and 4 carbons, you have two methyls. So this is going to be 3,4-dimethylhexane. Draw this compound. Okay, to draw 2,2-dimethylbutane, two, two the first thing you do is draw five, four carbons in a chain. And on the two carbon, you would have two methyl groups. So here are the four carbons in a chain. And on the number two carbon, it could have been this carbon instead if you wanted. On the number two carbon, you have two methyl groups. Okay, so which of the following is the three methyl butyl group? 
okay, to uh, name this, uh, name these, uh, let's just go through and name each of these, and maybe you'll get the hang of how you name these uh, attachments. How many carbons are in this chain? In this chain, you have five carbons, so the name of this substituent is pentyl. If I look at this uh, this chain, the longest chain is one, two, three, four, and there is actually an extra methyl group attached to this carbon right here. The way that we number that extra methyl group is we're going to call this methyl butyl. So one, two, three from the attachment end. So we call it three methyl butyl. If I look at this, uh, this substituent, you can see the longest chain of the substituent is three carbons. And on this carbon here, you would have an extra ethyl group. So how are we going to name this? Well, the longest chain is three, so we call it propyl. And then on the number one carbon, that's the carbon, uh, the number one is the one that is closest to being attached. The number one carbon has an ethyl group on it, so we call it one ethyl propyl. This carbon, uh, excuse me, this substituent is a three carbon chain with two methyls attached. So we're going to call this propyl, and then the two carbons are attached to the number two group. So we would call it 2,2-dimethyl propyl.